this vast population of one and a half million animals has an enormous impact on just about every other part of the biology of the system, from the soils to the plants to the other ungulates, to the birds, to the insects, to the predators. With such a large number of, uh, of animals, the predators, of course, can get a supplement to their food supply, uh, even if the population's not there the whole year round. Let's start from the bottom and work up. The, the soil and the soil microbes, they are affected by the degree of nutrition. The amount of dung and urine and nitrogen that is put into the ground by the wildebeest determines the rate at which these nutrients uh, can be processed and, and then sent back into the soil available for plants. And one of the things that, that people have found now is that this, these soils here are very high nutrition soils compared to other areas. And part of that is due to the fact that we've got such a high density of ungulates, namely the wildebeest. Now the next thing would be the insects. And in particular, we have uh, one, one type called the dung beetle. And what they do is follow the wildebeest. So they have their own mini migration following the wildebeest migration. Soon as the dung is produced, the dung beetles arrive within 15 seconds and they dive in, they ball it up into golf ball sized balls and they bury it. That provides the nutrition for the grasses that are the very uh, high nutrition grasses that the wildebeest are going to. So you see there's a very tight circle between wildebeest, wildebeest dung, dung beetles, high nutrition grass, more wildebeest. And that's what we call a positive feedback cycle. So when you think of it that way, who's driving the migration? But the dung beetles.